folks. Hello, welcome. Come on in. Take a seat by the fire. Set your intentions. Let's see what wants to come out. The Daily Dharma is uploading. We've got clarity and preservation on the bottom of the deck. Maybe some type of situation is pushing you to see clearly. Consistency of clear and clarity. We've got the sunshine here and then the amethyst geode there. Uh, so this one, if you look, the um, individual's hiding behind various things, looking a little bit reluctant. The mouth is obscured. The third eye color is shown way down here in the sacral area with then moth butterfly energy at the third eye crown. So there's a transforming belief coming from, um, I want to say the emotional depths, our sense of belonging, feeling isolated and separated here, where here there's an emergence of somebody coming out into the spotlight, out into the light from the shadows. So maybe there's a something that has created a need or an urge for retreat, something influencing your clarity. So during your time out in the spotlight or during the time separated and alone, there's been something influence your, influencing your ability to be clear or not clear. So getting clear about your brilliance. Okay, I love that brilliance card very partial to some of my stuff here. So within this time of retreat, you've been able to create a lot of brilliance from your process, I want to say. Yes, that's gorgeous. Revolution. So being able to stand apart from your conditioning, your socialization, or the evidence of your previous situations. I kind of see this as she's holding a lotus in her hand, looking over her shoulder, but it's like she's stepping out of something, moving away from something, leaving something behind, and shift. We had the change and the transition card come up in the uh, code cards. And when I shuffled afterwards, the change card remained on the bottom. Oh, and then just flipped over. Communication remains. I'll just take a couple of these in the middle here. So 12, change. 40, soul time. 21, feminine. Dynamic, 23. And 31, magic. So some of those came out this this daily dharma. So a shift in in soul time to me is that retreat. So a change in in whether that is satisfying to us in this time and place and pushing against this like why am I back here? Why am I being overlooked? Why am I not bringing myself fully? And then there's the shift and then dynamic to me is the emergence, the coming out of hiding when the when the sun starts shining onto the face and there's a, a sparkly quality to the eyes when the sun hits us in a certain way. And the same type of a thing happens with our aura. It's like as the light hits and influences our appearance, then it's like... um. Our magic is is um, showing itself. So what's this revolution against? Uh, what m made you take this retreat or this time away? A need for clarity and discernment. Efficiency. So with efficiency and discernment, it's like we couldn't see the the circumstance appropriately without creating distance because of the influence it held over us so if this is something with um an intimate partnership or a friendship 
between people, if there was some type of situation that came up, there's something that we are at odds with, some type of belief or something that has happened we disagree with and we're trying to seek for personal growth and perspective and where we fit in, how things fit in, what needs to shift and change. And taking this um, time out is the best way to get to that. Right, and there's the alchemy card coming between dynamic and magic. So it's by putting a stop to something, um, by... Taking that step back, our magic is able to, to work through us. Okay, yeah, all right. So there's some level of cognitive dissonance that was at play, which then we need to step back, gain some perspective in the most efficient way was to step back from the situation to get out of the frame of the picture so that we could see what was there. And in so doing, now we're aware of how we're playing into the dynamics for better or for worse and um, making more efficient use of our alchemy. So there's that sun card too. And so sun came out a little bit last week too. And I'm seeing this as the same as the soul time. Oh, and I like it where it's buried at right there. But uh, check this out next to this alchemy card, that central solar influence. So we had influence, the influence of the sun and um, the urge to be seen is moving through us. And with it being the hand, I generally see this as energy workers laying on of the hands, some type of massage or physical use of energy moving through the body and being the sun it's as though we're taking the sun in we are then able to push that into our experience by some type of means see her that thing in her hands there is that fiery mandala it's like she's taken it into her hands here and it's literally lighting up the hand here. So with Reiki, your hands actually get hot <clears throat> for many people. Stretch. So there's a, it seems to me, a stretch, a reemergence from this. Okay. Underneath stretches, dependability with this beautiful, almost twin flame dynamic here. It almost looks like, just in this moment to me, that perhaps there's possibility for a deepening of a union, um, an expanding of a family way, or a reclaiming of sacred space and support between the partners in this situation where one person might need something and the other person supports and vice versa. And when one individual has their hands full, the other comes and carries some of the groceries, so to speak. So with revolution here, a couple things coming up with this shift in revolution is like, maybe there's been some defensiveness or the belief pattern that, that we're in it all on our own, that we are isolated nobody's there to support and then we have ideas about what does dependability entail does it mean that i owe you does it mean that you're doing this for the wrong reasons or can i actually depend on you when i've never allowed myself to depend on others before and does this mean that i am more vulnerable more attached do i need to not rely upon you, even though you're showing me you want to support me? Should I be suspicious of this? And so it's like we don't trust in this way, but there's a, a deepening of trust, a shift of trust in the fact that we're, um, as we're able to leave behind the pain and suffering, we're able to um, 
rely on others in a new way, but also we're looking at, can I rely on you when things go haywire? When my life becomes chaos, are you going to stay in it for the long haul? Um, I want this one to be a little bit shorter because I know today is going to be a busy day for me. We'll take that one. Under the deck, we have here the yellow tiger mother, number 13. 13 also came out in the previous reading today. That is the tarot card of death and transformation, extreme liberation of the heaviness that holds us down and the enlightening and enlivening of that solar plexus will power energy to create to be creative with our energy and to create change in our own life to stretch out of our comfort zone with courage and confidence and to set forth new standards and boundaries when necessary so that our needs are being heard so that we are communicating the will of our consciousness and that of divinity with synergy under the deck. Let's see what pops out here. We've got number 40, the Yin Empress, doing this with very feminine energies and non-combative, not fighting for peace because that's counterintuitive, but to take the step back to open our hearts to be less defensive takes an enormous amount of confidence and courage to be able to be gentle and soft and, and uh, malleable in a circumstance. And then we've got some very challenging cards coming out from the Quan Yin deck. Under the Yellow Tiger Mother, I see both Chamunda, which is interesting under that Kelly Kalmasa Nassini which looks like um, someone kind of almost uh, at war when the daybreak comes the sun is rising there's a new day and uh, the war is ending and now we can see some carnage I want to say with that one so that's a little bit buried not a momentary or uh, an energy of the moment right now, from what I can tell. Chamunda, to me, is the divine comic who can sometimes employ things like harsh criticism with a chuckle to soften the blow, but it's still very aggressive. It's not even passive aggressive, it's very aggressive. Sarcasm, um, I believe it means something like to, to um, cut flesh or to cut, something like that. Number six, trauma nagmo. I may be butchering these pronunciations, sorry. And this one is very aggressive. That stretched out neck and that awkward like, eh, it's almost like a, a skinwalker energy to me. And she's got a... We've got communication here and talking about sarcasm and difficult, aggressive speech and war and fighting and misunderstandings and these skull necklaces. This dish that she's holding is actually the severed tongues of her enemies. Ooh, right? So perhaps when somebody says something to you that comes across in a certain way, there is... Um, a very defensive urge to strike out and to rip out the communication with the severity and the intensity of the words that we speak. Um, let's see what we say about this. I mean, there's a need to speak out and to not let others defame or, or gossip about you and to let that pass, but to do it with grace and decorum so that you don't lose face and join them in that. BS. Tromanagmo. I'll just let you peep at the card too while we're talking about it. 
Let's get it out of the fire. I like seeing the fire. Can you see that? There we go. She arises instinctively responding to a severe threat to your well-being, freedom, and sacred fulfillment. Her fierce form causes the impure to tremble and the pure of heart to move close. She is ferocious in her wrath against injustice. Dispense with thoughts of vengeance. Pray for mercy for all beings, especially those trapped in patterns of consciousness harmful towards themselves and others. Open your heart to her heart and allow her to attend to all matters of karma while you remain true to your higher self. Karma is not for us to impart. And I want to read that 31 Chamunda. I'll let you guys get another look at that one too. Yeah, something about um, this false humor. Her unerring instinct for spiritual protection arises spontaneously even when we do not realize the need for it. Sometimes we don't realize just how far we've become entangled in that which is not good for us. We do not realize we need Kelly's powerful intervention. Knowing what to allow and what to fight for or against requires wisdom. Holding the space for an inner or outer conflict to be resolved involves discipline. Shamunda is the fearlessness, wisdom, patience and discipline needed to conquer a difficult situation she is with you now so yes uh when when individuals come at us there's a need to to create the magical alchemy to channel the solar rays and not to get into the shadow elements of the past and into that revolutionary energy uh because there's nothing to rebel against. There's nothing to push against except our own inner uprising. So I'll finish this out and just let it stand with a nice easy one here. Yeehaw. It's not as if you need anyone or their approval. For as long as you wish to keep them in your life, whoever they may be, Understanding them as opposed to changing them will wildly improve the chances that they'll wish to keep you in their life. On the other hand, you're pretty much stuck with me. Oh, wow, how I love you, the universe. You've got some time, it says down here. Yeah, it's saying to value the qualities that are present. This is making me think of an individual in my life that um, is uh, already in um, about 90 and sometimes her judgments or even her fears can come out and being that we spend a lot of time together with uh, her objectives in her space, in her environment, she's the authority and she sometimes speaks in a way that is very challenging to my heart space and my want to be connected and to feel supportive to her. But I can recognize from my vantage point that that hurt people hurt people. And she has a lot of success and knowledge and information and I appreciate her and I respect her. And I have so much love for her from the point of my connection with my heart space. And I refuse to allow those little things that she communicates to interfere with my ability to perceive her light, however obscured I may perceive it to be. She's on her journey, and I can appreciate where she's at and hold space for her beauty without challenging, without revolutionizing, without fighting her. I can say, well, you know that isn't true. Well... Okay, well, whoever did it, then she retracts. I challenged without being challenging. So I think that you're able to witness yourself coming full circle from something. Perhaps in the past it was necessary to revolt, 
in order to be heard. Perhaps it was necessary to be um, more severe for her in order to be respected and to, in order for her to have people respond and to do things correctly. Perhaps she thought it was necessary to fight. And there's a reason why I resonate with her, right? There's a reason why we resonate with the challenges that arise. And it's in order to create alchemy from the shadows of the past. So I, I wish you many blessings on that pursuit. And I'll check back again with you all later. Thanks a lot.